Well, good morning, everybody. How you doing today? Isn't it good to be in God's house? Come on, everybody, right? Amen. Thank you, those of you that are joining us online. God bless you today. I'm so glad you're here today. Are you ready for Thanksgiving? I, I, that's like one of my favorite. Come on, Hulk. How many, know, how many love leftovers like me? Come on, how many know God is in the leftovers? Come on. I'm so glad you're here today. Thanks for coming. Uh, before we get into the series, I want to tell you about something really, really exciting that I've been involved with with some of my time recently. I have some friends in Ohio. Some of you know I go there annually, and they are doing a program. They are ministering to kids in the public school system during the school day, and they have 350 kids coming to their campus to hear the gospel every week. Did everybody just hear what I just said to you? Every week. And I was like, whoa, I got to find out about this. So I, I've spent an enormous amount of uh, time digging into this. And right now there is an opportunity to reach kids in the public school system that I didn't understand or know about legally. I had no idea about it. Right now, there's close to 50,000 kids hearing the gospel taught to them off campus during school hours by Christians every single week right now. It's in 309 schools in 17 states. Nobody in Florida, and they came to me and said, would you help us open up Florida? I'm like, well, yeah. So... We have an opportunity. I was told this week by a public official, this is one of the largest school systems, they think, in the U.S. And I'm like, bigger than Texas and California? And they said, yeah. And I'm like, okay, I don't know that, but that's what I was told. So right now, there's 50 million kids in the school that, that are in school. 45 million of those are in the public school system. The other 5 million are private schools and homeschool. But 45 million, and they're estimating 80% of those kids have never heard the gospel. It sounds like we're not from America when I hear numbers like that. 80%. And so, I don't know about you, but I'm interested in kids hearing the gospel about Jesus Christ. I gave my life to Christ at age five. So I know this stuff works, and it stuck for me. And so I'd like to show you a quick video. It's not long to just give you a little thought or idea what this program's about. It's called lifewise.org. So if we could show that, I'd be so grateful. The Supreme Court has spoken. Public school students can receive Bible education during school hours. I can't overstate the importance of that phrase in, in there. It's during school hours. Teach the Bible during school hours. During school hours. Bible education during school hours. I know it sounds crazy, but it's real. In 1952, the Supreme Court ruled that public school students can be released from school in the middle of the school day to receive Bible education as long as the program is off school property, privately funded, and they have parental permission. Not only is the concept possible, but it's spreading rapidly and students' lives are being changed. I have seen my own children testify. They've seen their classmates changed. Kids need to be affirmed, they need sports, but more than anything, they need to hear the gospel. I was in one class recently where the teacher asked if anyone knew the names of Jesus' parents. And in a class of 20 public school students, not a single one knew that Joseph and Mary were the names of Jesus' parents. But all of those students are now being taught the Bible.
people in our backyard who have never heard the name of Jesus. I don't know about any other organizations that are doing anything like this. We wouldn't be able to discuss these things with them if not for doing it right in the middle of the school day. The law allows us to do it, so why not do it? teaching the Bible to your public school students during school hours, go to lifewise.org and click find your school. Enter your information and sign your local community interest list and share it with everyone you know. It only takes 50 signatures to get started. Is anybody else fired up here in that? Anybody else want to see our kids hear the gospel? This is what I need right now, okay? I, I, those of you who would like to click on that QR code, I need you to sign up. If you know how to do that, or you can go on your phone, lifewise.org, and you're going to come to a, a page where it has red on it, and it says, it, it just talks about LifeWise. You're going to scroll down, and you're going you're gonna to click finding your school, and then you're going to say, we're in Florida. You're going to click Florida. And then you're going to click what area you're in. You're in Lake County. So you're going to hit Lake. It'll give you Lake or Lake Worth. You're going to hit Lake. And then that'll take you to a new page called Find Your School. And you're going to click that. And then our local school that we would help because we're geographically closest is Lost Lake Elementary School. So if you click Lost, it'll pop up. And then... uh, Put your name and your information in there. I suggest you put, I will pray, because right now we're not looking for money. We're not looking for volunteers yet. This is step one to get 50 to two, three, 400, whatever people, amount of people will do that. Now, some of you aren't tech savvy on your phone. I got you covered. <laughs> After the service, if you go into the lobby, we have laptops set up and somebody will help you sign up. Listen, this is what I need. I need to show the county that there is an interest from their community for kids to hear the gospel. That, that's all I need right now. You can pray with me, ask for favor, but you know this is step one of 10. So I, I told the group from Ohio, look, we got, we got it. Floridians got it, right? Come on, Flor- we got it. We, we can cover our area, we got it. And so you know, I've been communicating with different leaders all over South Lake and even into North Lake because I want to help this spread like wildfire because I I believe Jesus will change our generation. Jesus will change our nation. Jesus will change our community. And they're even looking now to take this even beyond the United States. And I tell them, listen, I'll help you, but let's start in our community, in our backyard, helping kids hear the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, everybody. Those of you who are wondering, they're allowed to pray with them. They lead them to Christ, the whole nine yards. I'm not going to get into all of it, but because it's off-site, it's an elective course where parents and children are, 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 they, they choose if they want to do this. And it's privately funded. It's not government funded. So the, these are some things you need to know about that program. Perhaps your kid isn't in Lost Lake and he, your kid goes to Windy Hill or Aurelia Cole. Can I ask you, you would sign up for those also because that's, that's where your kids are. So you should sign up for those things. But also do Lost Lake and put on there you'll pray because Pastor Rick needs 50 names. And I got 36. Come on, everybody, right? So we're, I, I, we'll have it by the day. We'll have hundreds more. So I, I'm believing you'll do that. Sound good? Thank you for your enthusiasm with that. I, I, man, I, 
I'm telling you, this could create a revival. I'm just telling you, this could be amazing. So I'm fired up already, right? All right, let's, let's talk about our subject today. This is the series, Glad You Asked. I asked you at, at Easter, what are some things you'd like me to talk about? And today, the subtitle's called Relationships. Many of you ask, how do we have better relationships? So that's what I want to talk to you about today, okay? We're going to have a conversation. In Matthew chapter 18, verse 19 and 20, it says, Again, truly I tell you that if two of you, come on, two everybody, will agree on earth about anything they ask, talking about in prayer, it will be done, it says, for them by my Father in heaven. The next verse says, we're two or three. Come on, there's a whole bunch more of us here than that. Are gather in my name, there I am in the midst. Isn't that a beautiful scripture? It's interesting that they're saying there were two or more gathered or two or are praying. And sometimes there's certain things spiritually that God's called you to be with other people and not by yourself. We were, we're not called to do life alone. We're called to do life together, right? And we're doing that even right now. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 and 10 says this. Two people are better off than one, for they can help the other succeed. And if one person falls, the other can reach out and help. But someone who falls alone is in real trouble. How many know we need each other? We need each other, okay? Just like I'm talking to you about this, I need you. I cannot pull this off on my own. I can do a lot, but I can't do it on my own. We all need each other, don't we? That, that's just how we were made. There's an interesting scripture in the book of Judges, chapter 18, verse 27 and 28, that shows us the need for people. They didn't have people in their lives, and look what happens to this city. They went to Laish, that's a city, against a people of, at peace and, sec, and secure, and they attacked them with the sword, and they burned down their city. There was no one to rescue them because they lived a long way from Sidon, that was their ally, and had no relationship with anyone else. Did everybody just hear that? That city, when they were attacked, had no one they could call to come help them because their closest ally was far away and they didn't have relationships near them, so they had their city destroyed. Can I say spiritually, if you have people far away from you and you don't have people near to you, you risk devastation and destruction in your life because sometimes, I mean, sometimes you need somebody to hug you, hold you, look at you, encourage you, help you, pray for you. And yeah, we can do it online, but come on, sometimes you need a touch not a FaceTime. Praise the Lord, right? And this whole city burned down because they didn't invest in relationships geographically near them. Did everybody hear what I just said? A lot of you moved from out of the area. We love you. We're, we're, you're awesome. We're glad you're here. But you got you to gotta get connected with some people around you so you're not isolated and alone. Amen? Amen, everybody. All right. There's an interesting story in Mark chapter 2, starting with verse number 1, about Jesus healing a paralyzed man. And it says, When Jesus returned to Capernaum, several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. And soon, the house where he was staying was so packed with visitors, there was no, there was no more room. That would be cool, wouldn't it, everybody? Jesus is chatting. And everyone outside the door, can you see in your mind, everybody's sitting on the ground and everywhere, on the couch, everywhere. There's people are just everywhere. And then they're outside listening to Jesus. And while he was preaching God's word to them, it says, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. Now, I need to stop there for a minute. This man couldn't bring himself to see Jesus Four people, four friends had to come bring him to Jesus because he couldn't bring himself. There are some problems in life. You were not made to maneuver yourself. You were made to maneuver with friends in your life. Did everybody hear what I just said? That doesn't mean you're weak. 
That just means this is another level that I need some friends in my life. So they carry him in front of Jesus. Verse 4 says they, they couldn't bring him in. Could you imagine, come on, coming from Groveland or Mascot and you walk to Claremont and you go to the house Jesus is at and you can't get in? How many know you're not excited? Come on, you're, my, 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 I got a little, little ache, right? come on, right? A little, ow, ooh, ah, ee, all these, you're like, are you kidding me? I can't get in. They couldn't get in because of the crowd. So somebody has the bright idea, we're going to go on the roof and we're going to make a hole. Come on, thank God for Geico, right? We're going we're gonna to break a hole, we're going to lower him in in front of Jesus. And then Jesus, seeing their faith, he said, Jesus says to a paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. Let me stop here for a minute. I've had some friends that over the, in the past, not right now, but in the past, they would have carried me because they love me to the house. They would have saw the crowd and they would have said, so sorry, Rick, we got to go home. Some of you laugh because you understand that, don't you? We all need friends who look at the obstacles and try to help us figure out how to maneuver through them, not tell us why we can't do it. A true friend loves to see you blessed. A true friend loves to see you succeed. When people are irritated by your success, that's not a true friend. That's somebody who's insecure about something and they got to work through their something because because there should be room for all of us to succeed. Is that true? It, it, it just, I mean, good friends care about each other. Okay? As your pastor, I, I want you to be so blessed. And you know what? I, I can pray for God to bless you with a car and not worry that I'm not going to get a car because I prayed for you to get a car and now I might not get my car. Are you kidding me? The earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof. And if God wants me to have a car, he can take good care of me and I can pray for you to get a car and not worry about, well, I'm, that might mess up my chances. Come on. You're thinking from a limited standpoint when you don't believe God's so big, he can't bless us all and take care of us. Come on, everybody, right? So don't have a scarcity mentality. Have an abundance mentality where God's big enough, he can do anything. So you bet I want to see you blessed. And besides, I believe in sowing and reaping. If I sow to help you get blessed, then I'm reaping something that I'm going to get blessed with. Amen, everybody? So these friends, they see an opportunity. We're going to climb the roof. We're going to peel back the shingles. Come on, somebody, right? We're going to take them off. We're going to lower that man right in front of Jesus. And then Jesus says, your sins are forgiven. One of, the, one of the greatest parts of this service is when I see family members and friends of yours or different people in the community respond to the gospel every week and give their lives to Jesus Christ. Is that an exciting part for you too? I mean, when I hear, I see one more, one more. I mean, I get fired up about that. And here, these, these four people hear Jesus say to their friend, your sins are forgiven. Can I, can I get you to think about this for a minute? How many know that was more important than touches his body so he's not paralyzed anymore? His spiritual state was more important than his physical state. So, verse 10, Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and he says to him, Stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. Come on, can, can you feel the anticipation with the guys on the roof? Like, whoa, it's happening. Come on, I think something's going to happen. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked through the stunned onlookers. And they were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we've never seen anything like this before. Can you see, can you visualize with me the four people? What do you think they were doing? Cheering? What else? crying. I bet they were high-fiving. Come on, can you, can you visualize in your mind's eye with me, tears going down their cheeks, hugging each other. Maybe they were calling his name. You go, Rodney. We're so happy for you. 
Rodney, Jesus. Come on, I don't know, but. You pick up that mat. Come on, everybody, right? You take that mat. I don't know what the interaction was, but it wasn't like this probably, right? It was excitement. And here's the thing I want to submit to you. The man never sees Jesus without his four friends. There are miracles that you and I are intended to have, but we got to have some friends in our lives for those things to happen. We're never, we were never called to do life alone. We were called to be together with that. So, so many of you have went through some really deep valley, valleys and climbed some steep mountains. You have something on the inside of you that somebody who's just going into their valley needs your encouragement, needs your strength, needs your guidance, needs your wisdom. You have something to give on the inside of you. Somebody say amen to that. So I'm under the persuasion you're either being carried or helping carry. Some of you are hurting really bad. Okay, take some time for you. Put the oxygen mask on. Take care of you because we need you healthy so you can be a blessing. But when you're not healthy, it's hard to be a blessing. And we don't want the last little bit you got being depleted out of you and we lose you because you gave when your well was already empty. Don't do that. Take care of you right now. Okay? Seek God for a while. Let him heal you. Let him touch you. Great. I, we have so many people who come in these doors just to heal. Fully embrace that. But if you're healthy and whole and doing well, you need to be a blessing to somebody around you. Life is bigger than just yourself. Come on. Come on. There's rooftops waiting for you to be on them. There's adventures you've not seen yet. And so we're either being carried or we're carrying people. That's where we should be. You have, you have value. So let's talk about relationships. Relationships are very spiritual, right? Very spiritual. And I'm going to give you three thoughts, just three. Number one, am I nurturing important relationships? I heard one yes. Great. Praise the Lord. You have to think about that. Am I doing that? Because if you say a relationship's important, what are you doing to make it stronger, the relationship? If you say, well, it's important, that's great. You value that. But if you value it, there'll be action steps to it. Okay? I'll give you some quick examples. If you value the relationship, be kind to that person. Well, I'm just a grumpy person. Well, you better get over yourself. Because he that show himself grumpy will have grumpy people around them. Be friendly, get friendly. Okay, Listen closely. If you value people, you listen to them. We don't always agree, but we listen. Don't be on your phone when someone's trying to pour their heart out to you. Open up. If you trust somebody, talk to them. Open up. Okay, But let them prove themselves trustworthy. If they put your business on Facebook, don't go back to the shop again. That's not good. Show that you can be trusted. Don't post what somebody tells you on Facebook. Okay? Hold it, hold it to the vest. You pray for that person. You don't repeat their stuff. And make yourself available. If somebody says, I need help, don't schedule them in three weeks from now. Everybody good with that? If somebody says, I need you, try to help them. Now, I get some people take advantage of that, but you, you learn the relationship where you are with that, okay? I get that. In um, Galatians 6, 2, it says this, bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. So we, we bear what we go through together. Number two, okay? So am I nurturing? Number two, am I severing harmful relationships? Ooh, this is an interesting one. Let me read some Bible verses. Proverbs 22, verse 24 and 25. Keep away from angry, short-tempered men or people. It says, lest you learn to be like them and endanger your soul. 
Did everybody read to hear that one? Let me give you a couple more. 1 Corinthians 15, 33. Don't be misled. Bad company corrupts good character. Proverbs 13, 20. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Everybody hear that? Proverbs 12, 26. A righteous man is cautious in friendships. Okay? I tell you all the time, who you hang out with is who you become like. Now, let me be practical. I have unbelieving friends, but I am the influencer. They're not influencing me. Okay? They may cuss like a sailor, but I'm not joining the ship. Did everybody hear what I just said? They may go, they may have their little vein popping. And look at them. Why are you so angry? <laughs> I'm not going to join that ship with them. Now, if I start to fo- see myself following bad patterns, then I need to really evaluate that relationship. That's free. My name's Rick. Just trying to help today. Everybody good? All right. So you, sometimes you got to go just cut off some relationships, okay? Number three, am I initiating meaningful relationships? Okay. I pray for friends. Great. Now what are you doing? I'm praying. Great. And what else? Come on. Faith without works is dead. Some of you pray a lot, and that's beautiful. Some of you read your Bible a lot. That's awesome. But how many know your feet got to work too? And if you want to make a friend, you got to be friendly. Okay? You, you got to connect with people. Listen. Some of you love coffee. Praise the Lord for if you love coffee, right? When you're over there at the coffee maker, getting your little coffee or whatever, say hi to somebody. And then the donuts. Come on, how many know God is in the donuts here? Come on, God is in the donuts. We're not getting rid of the donuts. Come on, praise the Lord. The only time we don't have donuts is when we're doing the 21 days of prayer and fasting, right, everybody? But otherwise, we go, we're going to have donuts here. And January's coming. You all know that, right? Eat your donuts now. But (laughs) But make a friend. Go to a small group. Connect with godly. Listen, I've been here 30 years as the pastor. I founded this church with you. This is some of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life right here. I'm just telling you, you're, you're some of the salt of the earth. You guys are awesome. And I, my, I, if, if I could, like, just connect people more. I, I mean, I try to connect people. But, man, I'm telling you, you can make friends here that you can, oh, it's just going to, your life's going to be so good. Some of you, you shouldn't be going, do I have four people counting? You should say, how many sets of four should I be calling to come carry my cot? I'm just telling you, you should have a whole bunch of Christian friends. And everybody said, everybody said, Amen means so be it. Come on, you, you want a piece of that. All right. Last verse. Proverbs 27, 17. As iron sharpens iron, so one person sharpens another. We need each other because we make each other better. Amen, everybody? Come on, to God be the glory. Amen, everybody? He's a good God. Thank you for your word today. I want to pray for you. Father in heaven, thank you so much that you care for us, you love us. I pray, God, that you'd help us in this subject of relationships. I pray that you would help us to nurture important relationships, whether it's family or friends or whomever. I pray that we would sever those harmful ones that are harming our soul, endangering our lives. Give us the strength to do that. And I pray that you'd help us to initiate new relationships. The Bible says the steps of the righteous are order of God. So order our steps and help us to connect with the people we need to connect with in our lives. I ask the blessing of God. I pray for those of you that have been hurt in past relationships that God would heal you so that you could embrace the people God has for you in this season of your life. I pray, God, that where we couldn't go in our own strength, you'd put the people around us so we could go further and deeper and higher. Lord, I pray that you would bless this people today, your people, your sons and your daughters. Lord, as we are also talking about this program as a church called LifeWise, 
I can't pull this off on my own, but together we can touch this community. I pray, God, for Claremont, South Lake, Lake County, Florida, the United States and our world, that we would make an impact. God, that you would allow us the gift of working together to do something for the kingdom of God. Bless this precious people in this house today, I pray in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray that anybody who doesn't know you would give their lives to you right now, we pray. Come on, if you agree with me, say a hearty amen this morning. Amen. To God be the glory. Would you just continue in that posture of prayer and pray that anybody who needs a touch from God, they would receive it. Anybody who needs to give their life to Christ today, they would do that. Just let the Holy Spirit lead your prayer. I want to talk to you that you, whether you're in this building or online, you say, Pastor, I feel so far away from God. I want to talk to you this morning. Can I tell you how to start this journey where you can connect with God? First, you've got to believe that Jesus Christ is God's son, that he died on the cross, he rose again, and the Bible says he's alive right now. Well, pastor, I believe that. Then you need to understand God's already working in your heart and you don't even realize it. For you to believe those things as truth, that's a miracle. God's spirit is breathing life inside of you. That's your first step to believe. There's a next step where you pray. You ask Christ in your life. You ask God to forgive you of your sins. In a moment, I'll actually help you. I'll, I'll articulate the words. All you have to do is pray it and mean it from your heart. And I believe God will answer your prayer and give you a brand new start right now. I believe there's people in this room, people watching online right now that you say, you're talking to me right now. Please, everybody praying right now. I need your support right now. Just pray. If that's you this morning and you say, Pastor, you're talking to me. I want to give my life to Christ for the first time. Or I feel compelled to rededicate my life to God. I'm just not living right and I'm convicted and I want to get things right. If that's you this morning and you want me to pray for you, I just want to know who I'm praying for today. Who, who, who we're spiritually helping carry the mat for right now. Because we want to carry you to Jesus right now. If that's you, would you just boldly put your hand up high so I can see who I'm praying for today? Yes, ma'am. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. Just want to make sure I don't miss anybody up here in the balcony over here. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. Yeah, I'll pray for you today. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Just going around the room here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Yeah, God bless you. I'm so thankful for people responding to the gospel. Anybody else today? God bless you. God is so good, isn't he, everybody? Would you pray this with me? Matter of fact, could we all pray this? And if you're online, pray this with me if you responded. Would you? Can we say this together? Dear Lord Jesus, I believe you're the Son of God. I believe you died for me and that you rose again and you're alive right now. Please come into my heart. Forgive me of my sins. Change my life. And fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Come on, everybody. Amen. Come on. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. So many. You were just guided through the salvation prayer. If you gave your heart to Jesus today, you have just made the best decision ever. We would like to connect with you to help guide you in your next steps in your relationship with Jesus. You can text FCC Guest to 97000 to connect with our team. Now is the time in our service where we prepare to give our tithes and offerings. If this is your first time tuning in with us, please feel no obligation to give. This service is our gift to you. If you call FCC your church and you want to participate in giving today, you can text FCC Give to 97,000, or you can give securely online at fcclive.com slash give. I'm going to take this time to pray over our offering. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for this day and thank you for this opportunity to give. Please bless it for your kingdom. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you'd like prayer today, you can text FCC prayer to 97,000 and a member of our prayer team will reach out to you. Thanks for joining us for church today. We hope you have an amazing Thanksgiving.